Welcome to the webinar. I'm Christian Howes. This is going to be a no BS webinar. I'm only interested in giving you information at a fast pace that you can use to go out and start making more money as a working musician now. The reason for this webinar is to help you figure out what's holding you back and move forward with the simplest actions that will enable you to create a powerful burst in your music career. And by powerful burst, basically I mean, how can we help you to make more money as a working musician? So let's jump right into it. With all of my students, I give them four steps to work through. And I'm just gonna run over each one of these really briefly so you get the whole overview. Step one is all about commitment. It's about recognizing that your music career is a business and making a commitment that you're gonna work on just the business aspect. If you work on the business side now, it's gonna enable you to position yourself financially to be more creative later. If you're trying to make a huge burst forward and create a big growth in your income now, I recommend that you are willing to schedule a minimum of 10 hours per week. Step two is to identify just a few very clear goals that you're gonna work on now. Now I realize most of us as creative musicians, we have a lot of goals, so many things we wanna do. But what I recommend is just temporarily that you pick one, two, and not more than three goals that you can focus on. A short-term goal might be get more work playing as a side person, you know, performing as a side person with bands. Um, or create an additional $200 per week in income from private teaching. Another clear goal is to get more gigs with your own band playing at bigger venues and festivals. Getting an additional $1,000 a month in licensing your original music. Another goal could be to earn an additional $10,000 per year through the establishment of a 501c3 organization and by spearheading several grant-funded projects. Grow your remote recording service or your production services and set a very specific amount of money that you want to make from that service every week or every month. Do you see how specific these goals are? To make sure your goals are specific, I like to put a dollar amount on them. If you're teaching a private studio, you can say, I want to earn an additional $200 a week teaching lessons. Or you could say, I want to get five more full-time students. Now, here's examples of what are not goals. Building a website does not count. Making a Facebook page does not count. Producing an album does not count. Yes, I understand all of these things could be useful, but it's a mistake to call those things a goal. Those things are a means to an end. I really want you to be focused on the prize. The prize is increasing your income, increasing your independence. And you may need a better website. You may need more uh, Facebook friends or fans. And you may, need, you may wanna make an album, but so many times people get distracted by these means to an end. So step two, create clear goals, not more than three. At any time, feel free to click the link below to schedule a call with me and we'll sit down and look specifically at your business, the things that you're not sure about, the things you're struggling with, whether it's around your sales process, sales psychology, or clarifying your goals. I'd love to talk with you one-on-one -on -one, and all you have to do is click that link right there and set up a call. Step three is all about an action plan. And when I say an action plan, what I actually mean is a sales plan because everything comes down to sales. In fact, I would tell you, if you want to take one thing away from this webinar today, if you could simply go out every day and make five offers, offer your services five times every day, to the right people, you'll be set. And really the single answer to what's gonna help you grow your business is simply assuming that you have a valuable service to offer, to offer your service or product to the right people 
persistently, consistently, and appropriately over time. That's all it is. Seriously, no BS. I told you, absolutely no BS. If you can go out and sell yourself every day, you're going to make money. So let's unpack that just a little bit. You'd make a list of all the contacts that you can think of who would be looking for what you offer. So if you want to work at churches as a singer, then you want a list of all the church music directors within 100 miles. You get that list and you simply send them emails, send them Facebook messages, send them text messages, (laughs) call them on the phone or show up and offer them your services. When I moved to New York City, there were a few groups of people that I called in order to get sideman work. One of those groups of people was other violinists in New York City. And I was specific. I looked for improvising violinists, and I called the top five improvising violinists in New York City, and I asked them to consider me as a sub. I ended up getting a lot of work from these five people who needed a good sub to be able to refer so they could have more flexibility. Now, also, I called band leaders who I knew would be interested in hiring a violinist. I didn't just call them once. I would call them three times, four times, five times. Sometimes I would go over and I would take an audition for them, or I would just play for them, or I might even pay them to take a lesson. Those band leaders ended up calling me. In fact, Les Paul ended up hiring me for 10 years until he passed away. And I started playing with Les Paul from literally from tapping him on the shoulder. But there are so many other great band leaders in New York City, who took me all over the world performing because I reached out to them. And I didn't just reach out to them once, I reached out to them several times. Now, no matter whether you're a composer, a producer, a performer, a singer, an instrumentalist, or a teacher, it's all gonna hold true for you. It's about making the offer, finding the right people and making your offer to them persistently, consistently, over time. So there are two things I like to talk about when it comes to sales, when it comes to your action plan, which is a sales plan. Number one is sales psychology. And by sales psychology, what I mean is your reluctance or your willingness to sell your services or your products. Many people are reluctant to sell for a variety of reasons. And the second aspect of sales is the process that you use to sell. Selling to one person can be a very simple process, but if you're trying to reach out to 20 people over a period of time, it becomes more and more complex, and there are a lot of things that you can do to make that process much more efficient. Most people are reluctant to sell their services and products because they don't want to appear pushy or overly self-promotional. Often we feel when we're asking something or offering to be a service to people, We're afraid that they're judging us. We're afraid that they're seeing us as being pushy or being out of place with our offers. But in reality, most of the time they're not. And if you tweak your perception in your mind of how you're coming off to other people, it'll actually make a huge difference. If you're, let's say your sibling or your partner or a friend or a family member, if they were reluctant to go out and sell their products or services. Just think about how you would feel about that. Let's say it's somebody in your family and they were excited about a dream that they wanted to follow. And they told you about that dream. And they said, but I don't know if I can really go ask anybody for the chance for me to do this. Let's say they they wanted to be a writer. They wanted to write books. And they said, well, I don't think any publishers would ever, you know, publish my book. So I'm just not going to ask any publishers. What would you tell them? I think I know what you would tell them. You would encourage them to go out and ask for opportunities. You would encourage them to go for it. So think about yourself now. Why wouldn't you go for it? Why don't you give yourself the same advice? Here's another example. Think about observing how other people sell to you and how it makes you feel. For example, two teenage girls knock on the front door of your house and they ask you if you'd like to buy some Girl Scout cookies to support their Girl Scout club. Here's another example. Someone at McDonald's asks you if you'd like to supersize your order. Listening to the radio, you hear someone asking you to consider giving just a little bit of money to support the publicly funded radio station. You get an email or a Facebook post announcing the release 
of one of your friend's CDs or someone asking you to come to their show. Or you get an email from another musician that you know announcing their Kickstarter campaign and asking you to consider sharing it or consider contributing to it. Do you get my point? These are all ways that people sell to you every day and you don't even blink an eye. You don't flinch. And you don't necessarily get mad when people ask, when they offer. So why are we so reluctant to sell ourselves, to offer our services? Well, again, I think the reason is because we're afraid of how we'll be perceived But if we look at how we perceive others when they sell to us, especially when we're sold to appropriately and when we're sold things that are relevant to us, we realize that our perception's off. If you can tweak that in your head, it'll make a huge difference. And there's a lot of other things I could talk about related to sales psychology to help you find the sweet spot for how you can offer your services or your products in a way that you feel comfortable, that is completely in alignment with your integrity. So remember, the sales process is as simple as making offers. Let's go a little deeper into the sales process. You look at the sales process as a long-term conversation. Sure, there are some people that you can just reach out to and say, hey, you know, I'm available this week. Are there any gigs? And somebody might say, oh, yeah, I've got a gig on Friday I need a bass player for. That happens sometimes. You make one phone call and you ask for a gig and you get a yes. And that's beautiful. But more often than that, we have to stay in conversation with people over time so that when the right time comes, they'll call us. If we look at the sales process as a long-term conversation, then we engage in many conversations with many prospects over time, and we create this snowball of trusting clients who call us with repeat business and recurring revenue, and it gets easier and easier. Now, every conversation you have with someone is either going to result in a yes, a maybe, or no. Now, if someone says maybe, or if they say, Well, now, right now, right right now, I'm not looking for a bass player in my band. Or right now, we're not booking for a festival. Well, that's not no. That's not now. So you immediately want to ask when and how to best contact them in the future. And also, you might ask them for referrals or advice. Once they tell you when to contact them and how to contact them in the future, you immediately mark your calendar. If you do this five times, 10 times a day... Can you imagine over 30 days, over 60 days, over six months, how many contacts you're going to be engaged in conversations with about your services? The more that you reach out to them, the more you develop a relationship with them, they're going to trust you, they're going to take you seriously, and they're going to come to like you because you're showing up for them. You're not giving up on them. There are so many people that reach out once and they never follow through. They never reach out again. The people that continue following through and having those conversations always earn trust and earn respect and earn reciprocation. And the more that you build trust with more and more clients, the more referrals you'll get, the more gigs you'll get, and the less you'll have to work for them. So again, remember, the sales process is simply about making offers to the right people appropriately, consistently, and persistently over time. If there's one thing you take away from this webinar, it's that if you want to make more money, start making more offers and follow up with people. As I said before, at any time, feel free to click the link below to schedule a call with me and we'll sit down and look specifically at your business, the things that you're not sure about, the things you're struggling with, whether it's around your sales process, sales psychology, or clarifying your goals. I'd love to talk with you one-on-one, and all you have to do is click that link right there and set up a call. Okay, so let's move on to the fourth step, otherwise known as marketing materials, marketing assets. These are simply the tools that we use to amplify our sales message or support our sales message and prove our value. So marketing is simply about amplifying your sales message. One of the biggest mistakes I find with people in terms of their marketing is that they're often distracted by the shiny objects in the mirror. You know, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, 
The biggest piece of advice I could give you about marketing is just to pick only two or three things and work them consistently, commit to them, and totally hit them out of the park. This could include email marketing, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, website, YouTube, LinkedIn, flyers, brochures, posters, podcasts, infographics, photos, business cards. All of these things in one way or another are just giving some kind of proof for what you do, giving you a chance to show people the value of what you can offer in different ways. Now, here's a couple things you can do just to make sure that your marketing collateral is where it needs to be. Number one, can you describe your service or product in three ways? For example, in a sentence, in a paragraph, and in a page. And when you do present your products or your services, make sure that you present them in terms of your buyer's benefits. Your sales materials or your marketing materials should always be about the benefits that your service is going to provide to your clients. Typically, I would say that the basic marketing materials you need include an image, some copy, a video, and some testimonials. If you have a clear bio, then that's great too. Now, there are so many people out there talking about music business and they're just all focused on marketing. They're focused on Facebook, YouTube, um, this or that, Periscope, Snapchat, Facebook Live. There's no doubt that you can use all these different platforms in powerful ways, but there are so many people who are spending hours and hours a day on social media or trying to build uh, videos and they're not actually generating any income from it. You know, I, there are so many different types of marketing technologies that I've used over the last several years, and I really am grateful for those, and I really do welcome those. But I know that the thing that helps me focus and actually make a quick growth in my business whenever I need to do that is sales. And that's the thing that's going to move the needle for you, too. So we covered basically the four steps. We talked about number one, which was committing to your career as a business and really getting behind that commitment, you know, focusing on why you do what you do, connecting with your passion, feeling driven about it, being sure, being 100% that every day you wake up during this drive to create this burst of income, that you're going to be focused on that clear goal, right? On that, on that why, on that big, powerful transformation that you want to create. Number two, limiting your goals so that you can narrow your focus to just one, two, and not more than three clear objectives to create that extra income or to, to create that extra time or to go to the next level in your career. Number three, the action plan, which is all about sales. And that if there's nothing else you do, that if you simply make those offers every day, I guarantee you, I don't care if nothing else is working for you. If you can go out and make offers every day to the right people appropriately, consistently, and persistently over time, you will make more money. <clears throat> Number four, marketing materials. You want to have some simple, clear marketing materials that can support your sales plan and amplify your message and show people the value that you bring, whether it's through a, a nice image, a nice video, testimonials from people who have worked with you before. All these things are just going to enable your prospects to trust you, to see that you're for real. Don't overcomplicate it. Make sure that your marketing materials are clear and that you're not trying to use too many kinds of marketing materials. So that is really, as I said, the four steps that I recommend for any working musician who wants to make a leap forward in terms of making more money now. And so that you can take your career to the next level and eventually do all the things you want to do. And as I said, I want you to feel free to schedule a free call with me. Click the link below here. And you're going to have a chance to just fill out a couple really short questions about your goals, your struggles, your history in the music business, 
And I am going, if you're on this webinar, I'm going to accept that call with you. And I'm going to call you at whatever time you schedule on my calendar. <clears throat> and I'll spend a half an hour with you at least just talking about your business. There's no obligation associated with that call. I'm happy to help you out as long as I have availability. So this this offer will not be happening all the time. It's happening right now because I'm launching my next iteration of the Music Mastermind course coming up very soon. So when I'm opening the course, then I give away a bunch of free calls to people. And it's good for my business because I'm offering value to people. I'm showing them what I do and whether or not you wanna take my course, you may learn something from me and you wanna share it with somebody else. So step five, which is about going into action, that's really sort of what, my course, Music Biz Mastermind, is all about. It's a 30-day challenge where every participant in the course is taking action every day. And I limit the course to a small group of musicians so that I can give feedback and support every day in helping you be accountable to take those actions. No doubt, I'm practical. And this is all about the practical side, right? Like I make no bones about it. I want to make money so that I can support my family. I want to make money so that I can make the music I want. And I think that all working musicians should be more focused on the practical side. But I do believe that mindset is crucial. Beyond answering the question why you want to be in the music business and what you want in your life ultimately, which is about mindset, and really being connected to that so that you can get up every morning and being just charged up and pumped, willing to move past your fears and make those offers, I also believe it will help you tremendously to think about caring yourself in certain ways. You should be responsible. You should be kind. You should be grateful. You should be confident and you should always be in service to other people. There are so many musicians that I see that think it's all about their talent. And so they have this idea that, that, that the world owes them something. And I just completely disagree with that. When I think about everything I do, whether I'm performing, producing, teaching, composing, when I think about it as coming from a place of service, it helps me all the more to feel confident about making those offers because what I'm offering to help other people, I'm offering to serve a need in the community. It's not about it's not about just about serving me, it's about serving others. That makes it a lot easier for me to sell and to land those sales, to close those sales. But it also just makes me happier to focus on gratitude to project confidence, to be kind to people. So I really want to encourage you to think about being in service to others around you and, the, and your community through the music you make or the music you teach. Allow the impact of the beauty you bring to the world to be a cause that lifts you up and to be something that you're willing to unabashedly fight for.